This is Sandy with Needs a Ribbon bringing you a crafty edition uh, where I'm going to make one of my square samplers that I've been known to make. And I will be using the mini alphabet dies, which look like this. Hopefully, I can't even see my camera, so hopefully I'm relatively on camera. The mini alphabet dies, which cut out an entire alphabet plus a little bit of extra on it. And then I will also be using the tooled up or the tool set that is in the spring 2024 mini cap. I will be using this. Those are the only dies I used. There were no stamps harmed in the making of this. So this is what I made with um, using that background to make like the pegboard that's in, you know, a workshop or a workbench and the alphabet tooled up and let's kind of get started. So I'm gonna pull my pieces off and hopefully I remember what order I had pleasantly wanted them in. Um, hopefully we'll try and take them off in some semblance of an order. Ba, 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 ba. Um, there we go. One, two, three, four, those have, I've already applied a bunch of the adhesive just to make it a little faster. Um, so what, um, and then I'm using the celebration tooled up or whatever it's called, trusty tools paper. So I fussy cut a bunch of tools. We'll just see which ones I end up using, if not all of them. And um, so the first thing I do, you know, I get my items planned out. And so if you can see, you have a three by three as your center square. Then you need four two by two inch squares, four one and a half by one and a half inch squares, four one and a fourth by one and a fourth inch squares, and 16 one inch squares. Sometimes I do like with the 16 one inch, sometimes I do four each of four kinds. Sometimes I do eight each of two kinds. It just kind of depends on the paper, the mood, and all of that, and the theme that I'm going with. So the first thing I like to do is um, figure out where the center of my paper is. I have a little gadget that I've come up with at home to help with this, but in that I am on the road right now, I had to kind of come up with something else, and that's part of why I use a pencil too is so I'm just gonna go ahead and make a long mark here. Oops, well that's not gonna show anyway. I wanna extend beyond the center. Yep, <laughs> this is my finger mark. And, um, where is it, see? This paper just stretches from corner to corner, but it works. Okay, and I, my paper is kind of well used because I've been on a craft retreat. Oh, that one doesn't go very far. It's okay, we'll kind of fake it. So this will be my center square, part of the twisty tools or whatever the tools paper is. And this is how I do my center. Again, I have a kind of a rig at home that I use. So, um, um, I just make sure that the points follow along those lines and then I'll tape it down. And sorry about the background noise. We are at a retreat, so, um, yeah, just make sure all the points kind of follow along the, um, lines. Then I'm done and I no longer need those guidelines, so I can go ahead and erase them. And so we have that, that's our center square. And what we do then is the next is, so that's the three by three and I layered it with the three and a quarter by three and a quarter. Next up is the two by two inch squares and I've chosen to use this paper because I thought, let's start to bring in a little bit more color here. And we'll add those. Um, like that. And like that. Hopefully. 
hopefully I'm square. You don't need to see too much of the top of my head. So these are great to use for, I call them a sampler, just because they're a wall hanging type thing. But I know I have known people that have used them for wedding pages for scrapbooking. Um, you could add in photos instead. The layout is still valid for a lot of things. Um, and this was originally done by Sarah Douglas, the CEO of Stampin' Up, something she shared. And um, so then we have another side of the paper. And this is the one and a quarter and these are the one and a half inch squares. And I put these up with dimensionals. It helps to vary and ones you, you add height and not height. So um, that adds your visual interest also. So in this case, I put that one flush, but if I put this one up on dimensionals, I probably wouldn't have mounted this on dimensionals, but put these two on dimensionals. Um, but the height variance is part of what makes this even more cute. Again, some people use these for scrapbook pages or for other things. Um, there's a lot that these can be used for. I use glue because that way I can kind of do like that and smear the glue around and make sure that they're in the right position. Like that. And then I'll put these down also, the little adhesive. And this paper is kind of a Lost Lagoon on Lost Lagoon print. It looks like solid cardstock, but it's really not. Do you see how fast these come together? Once you, the thing that takes the longest, even the cutting the paper doesn't take long. It's deciding which side of the paper you want. If you use um, our double-sided designer series paper. Sometimes I have used or included cardstock. Very, very, very rarely. And I've been making these a long time. So next, we have all our 16 little one inch squares. And you see how fast this is going? So, and then we'll decorate the center square. So this, I have to remember what all I had down. So that one goes, I thought that'll go opposite that. And that one goes, actually that'll go, and that goes up, I think. And I have some of my, so up. And then, down. Is that right? Down, down, up, up. Yep. That is correct. Or, yeah, I didn't want the Lost Lagoons by each other. So, we'll add that. We'll go around and add, we'll build out from our Lost Lagoon piece. Um, sometimes it's fun, like you've got a semi-direction to turn it that way. Why don't we do that to add a little more direction, direct the eye inward. Um, then we could go up and down then. That piece got a little chopped up, but once it's put together, nobody will notice. And then, yeah, directional. And then we'll add in our next square, and we're almost done besides decorating. Do you guys see how fast these build? Isn't that awesome? So, there we go. And the next up, we'll add these up on dimensionals, which is this side of the paper, and the back side is that. So, using both sides of that paper. And these do have a direction. I'm gonna keep them upright, or no. No, we'll add direction. Now that one should have done, if I'm gonna do that, that one should go pointed in, pointed upright. If you can kind of see the tools there. Pointed in. And point it upside down then. Whoops. So point it upside down. And then the last is this last square. 
where, again, we have kind of a directional. So let's give it a little movement since this is already kind of boxy. Um, yep. Putting the screws toward the inside and the nuts. Screws and the nuts. Like, where are we? Yeah. See how I did that? And it kind of brings the eye in. So it's just, you're adding visual lines. So I think I'm done with my glue, done with my pencil. Now we just need to build in our tools. And these are the ones that out of the paper, the celebration paper that I cut out. I hand cut these. I realized there are dies, but I was trying to stick to as minimal tools. Oh, minimal tools as possible. And we have that little thing. So one of my thoughts was to kind of put the saw, I'll kind of move it over there, the saw off, kind of coming off or coming in. And I don't normally build on the outside, but this time I wanted to. I just thought it was a, kind of an interesting concept. It doesn't hurt to vary it up a little bit. So, um, and let's see, tool, tool, put that one in the middle, the hammer, because it's kind of the tallest. Make a nice visual middle. And we'll add our pliers, or as my husband used to call them, or still calls them squeezers. Another squeezer type, the wrench. Yeah. And that's, they're kind of off center a little bit, partly because of the way I'm not done. I added, we're adding a lot of height here. Hopefully I put these in the right place. So, so we're, we're there, we're tooled up. And then we have these elements also. So we've got the tape measure, which I kind of wish that was <laughs> that way, but I don't want to add it upside down. So, hmm. And then we have a pencil. So why don't we do this? Of, hmm. Something like this. And then maybe somewhere down in here. So that is our sampler for today. And I hope you've enjoyed the instructional video. It's the first time I'll trim that off. Ooh, we got one where I forgot to put the pull the backing off. Okay, well, that does happen. Um, let's trim that off. And um, what do you think? Let's uh, push that way out of the way so you can see it. So that is our sampler, and that is how you build a square, or what I call the square or squared sampler, with the three by three, the one three by three square, four two by twos, four one and a half by one and a halfs, four one and a quarter inch by one and a quarter inch, and 16 one inch of however you wanna do it. I mean, you could do them all in the same color pattern, whatever. Hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you for joining me. Bye.